Hi, this is Annie Grace and I am answering readers' questions. And today I have a great question, which is basically, how long does it take for alcohol to leave the body? I've had lots of conflicting answers. There's a lot of conflicting information. And of course, so much of this depends on your specific body. You know, how is your body processing alcohol? How tolerant are you? How long have you been drinking? How much has your brain compensated for the presence of alcohol? And how much is your brain triggered by circumstances? Because say you've drank alcohol with dinner every single day for the last two years, then as soon as you start to make dinner, your brain is actually gonna have a response before you take a drink that anticipates the alcohol. And so all of these things play into this question. So the specific answer is it's between 24 and 72 hours for the actual substance, the ethanol, that is the same chemical compound as it is in gasoline. I know some people are surprised to hear that, it's just true. Um, for the ethanol to actually leave your body. So there's no ethanol in your body, your blood alcohol content is zero, you know, that's 24 to 72 hours. That is, is the case, but there's so much more to this question because your brain has to rebalance. Your brain has been pre-compensating for alcohol for years, decades in some of our cases. And so for me, it was really 30 days for that entire process to happen. And I know that can sound like a lot, but I felt so much better in the first two weeks. And then by 30 days, I really just felt amazing. It was like, I was going from living in a world where there was so much anxiety and everything had sharp edges to living in a world where everything was almost pillow-like and soft. <laughs> and of course, you know, or you may know that, you know, about a year after that change, I really felt so confident in, in my new emotional state that I started the process of getting off four antidepressants that I was taking at that point in time. And so that was really the journey for me was 30 days. And of course, this is gonna be different from everyone, but I wanna give you some color on how this works and, and just sort of give you an analogy. Um, imagine that you are in a truck, right? And you're in a truck and that truck is going downhill. And in order for that truck not to go too fast downhill, you are riding the brakes, right? And so all of a sudden, and, and imagine that your brain is kind of like the truck and the truck is naturally going to go a bit faster. There's gonna be more stimulation, but you've installed these brakes and maybe alcohol is the brakes. Now alcohol, I'm calling alcohol the brakes because the, the truest nature of alcohol is as a depressant. It depresses our nervous system. It, it gives us overall less energy. And so your brain responds to that depressant nature by releasing stimulants and it releases adrenaline and it releases cortisol and it releases these stimulants to overcome the depressant nature in alcohol, okay? This is a super simplified explanation to something that's quite a bit more complex, but I just want you to understand that in many ways, the body needs to actually rebalance. So imagine that you're that truck, you're going downhill, and you know life is getting intense, so you're accelerating downhill naturally, things are getting a bit more stressful. So you apply this break of alcohol, right? And really what you wanna do is, is try to live on a more even road <laughs> in general, address the things, the reasons that you're drinking in the first place. And that's obviously the end goal, but in the short term, when you take the alcohol away, what is that truck gonna do? It's gonna over accelerate because all of a sudden it's expecting the brakes and so it's not going to down gear or downshift or do any of the things that a truck should naturally do to slow down. It's just going to go a lot faster because it's been expecting the brakes. And so similarly, when you up drinking, some of the things that can happen, just like totally adrenalized. You can have a hard time sleeping for the first week or so because you just cannot relax because your body has been producing extra cortisol, extra adrenaline to compensate for the depressant nature of alcohol. Now there's a lot of other things that your body does to compensate for the presence of alcohol. And by the way, if you drink it every single day, you've trained your brain to release these chemicals. If you are drinking or not, it isn't in response anymore to the drink. It is in response to the situation, the circumstance, because the brain is super smart. And it says, okay, I know that we always do this at this time. So I'm going to compensate for it in advance. Now that takes a lot longer to rebalance. And there is some discomfort in that rebalancing. And I say the discomfort on average lasts about 14 days. 
that's how long it was for me. But then I still had to go through some, you know, some weirdness for the first 30 days, but I started feeling significantly better in the first 14 days and really good in the first 30 days. And it is different for everybody. Some people, you know, report that that didn't happen at all. Some people report that it did happen. Uh, according to the CDC, there is 10% of excessive drinkers. So 10% of not all drinkers, but 10% of just excessive drinkers that are chemically dependent on alcohol. If you have any fear that that might be you, you know, never stop without medical supervision, without talking to your doctor, because it can be super dangerous for some of these exact reasons that we've talked about. Because if your body is chemically dependent and you cannot stop, you've not, you know, stopped for, for a day in the last 10 years and you've been drinking at excess and you really feel like, wow, I might have some very serious body responses from stopping, please, please work with your doctor. It cannot be overestimated how important that is. But for most of us, the 90% of excessive drinkers that are not chemically dependent, we can stop and just with relatively little discomfort. I like to frame that discomfort as, okay, I am willing to be sick, a little bit sick, a little bit uncomfortable, a little bit in order to get my whole life back. And when you change how you feel about alcohol before you make that choice, it's so much easier to stick through some of that discomfort because you know what's on the other side has so much for you. So anyway, that is a very involved answer to a very intelligent question of how long does it take for alcohol to leave your system after you stop drinking?